Hello, Yeshua Network. Are we live? Yes. Oh, hi. Just kidding. I knew that. Hi, everybody. Hopefully, you're having a wonderful day. We had a video this to earlier today that I hope uh, will also be a blessing on to you guys. If you haven't checked that out, uh, it should be the one right underneath this one on the timeline at Yeshua Official on Facebook. And it was about witnessing to people. How to witness. Why do we witness? What's our hearts and mindset when we witness? So, yeah, I just thought that was a really great conversation that was started by one of our... our uh, members here at the uh, Yeshua Network. So yeah, check that out too. While everybody's logging on, we want to welcome everybody and hope you are being a blessing. Well, I know you're already a blessing, but I mean being even more of a blessing. And uh, in case there's anybody new jumping on, yes. we welcome you. We're happy to have you. Um, uh, this is part a, of a very long video series called The Entire Bible Read Through. We're now in Matthew 17 in the New Testament. Uh, if you're starting and you're new, we recommend highly you go to the beginning and you go and you watch the videos and read the Bible for yourself in order and come to the videos and uh, fellowship. Um, we've heard great things from people about how wonderful, uh, the fellowship is even recorded that it's very helpful and and very uh enlightening and all that good stuff so um but feel free to watch this video if it's your first time visiting and also there is a link at the top of the page on yeshua official on facebook and that link has um a lot of our videos or all of our videos all of our content uh, and you can search per topic so if there's a topic you want to see or if you want to go to our YouTube channel, which is Yeshua Official, all this is in the description of the video, by the way. And you can see all these videos that make up the entire Bible read through series in order in a playlist. So that will be also very helpful for you. Yeah. So I think we got all the stuff out of the way. Huh? Yes. I all right. We can jump right Let's in. Let's jump on in. Let's get this part started. Okay. Okay. Welcome. Here we go. I'm so... Nathan Wheeler. Are we doing introductions again? I'm Alex Lavosky. Well, I didn't say my name today, did I? I said, are we live? Right. Right. Correct. We did not say Even though names. the name is underneath us. But it's nice to repeat. Well, some people can't read. Oh. That happens of too. What? I got to turn that There we go. Oh. The video was starting. Also, you didn't start recording. Oh, yeah. I give you 12 jobs. All right. 12 so, jobs. 12 Hi, jobs. Hi, I'm Nathan Wheeler. Hi. And this is video Matthew 17 of the entire Bible read through. <laughs> ah, yes. I'm the other guy. Oh, and, oh uh, no, no, no. What? He's stealing my line now. I like that. I'm the other guy. How does that feel? Do you like that? No, I don't. No. Steal my, steal my thunder. I like stealing your okay, thunder. Sorry, okay, sorry, guys. You know how we do here. Let's jump Goof on in balls. now that we got the goofiness Goof out. Alert. Shake the goofiness off. Did it's they do like, that? Yeah, after it's like PE. kindergarten. Yeah, kindergarten. After yeah. PE, after Kids recess. Come in, you got to shake, shake the off the goofiness off. off. Okay, yeah. that's us. Mm -hmm. I never grew up. Mm -mm. I'm like Peter Pan. Okay. Yeah, Toys R Us. What? Okay. Yeah, yeah Toys R Us, exactly. Jennifer Connolly, Matthew 17, 3 through 5. And behold, <clears throat> Moses and Elijah appeared to them, talking with him. Then Peter answered and said to Yeshua, Lord, it is good for us to be here. If you wish, let us make the let, let us make here three tabernacles, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. While he was still speaking, behold, a bright cloud overshadowed them, and suddenly a voice came out of the cloud saying, This is my beloved son, in whom I am well pleased. Hear him. This is awesome. When I read this, I can't help but wonder why he brought back Moses and Elijah from the dead. What on earth were they talking about? Was this an example of his resurrection power bringing them on the scene, bringing them back from the dead, Moses and a prophet, Elijah? Um, the scripture popped right into my head, Luke 16, 31. If they do not listen to Moses and the prophets, they will not be convinced even if someone rises from the dead. It seems like if anybody on the mountain had any doubt, it was laid to rest in that moment. He also transfigured in front of them. How were they all, how were they able to stand? I guess they weren't able to stand. I just read chapter six. <laughs> Amazing. He brought in the witnesses and he had the father announce him just in case they couldn't recognize. Why did Peter want to build three tents? 
he just wanted to camp there in the present he just wanted to camp there in the presence of god in heaven can't blame him for that why did peter want to build three tents i don't know yeah you do i do yeah go for it i believe in you wow that's that's bold is it bold that's bold i i don't really that i believe that you got this well well yes, let's see if cause... there's anybody else that has comments though before we i don't want to steal thunder from anybody okay perfect yeah go ahead good dude. comment by the way and Very i like that comment. you did the reference line as well uh about the um uh, go up about the uh luke 1631 thank you for doing that i love that that's really good stuff okay mm -hmm. go ahead go down there you go oh i read huh yes, my turn to read? yes oh my turn okay Oguchuku, matthew 17 3 to 12. i find it fascinating how peter was able to identify moses and elijah without being told who they were oh he had a picture of them though remember yeah <laughs> Oh man! Yeah, I'm... he just took out his iPhone. He's like, wait a second. Searched. Who are these dudes? <laughs> Google, list phone, rock. Okay. I am such a dork. All right, here we go. Take two. <laughs> I find it fascinating that Peter was able to identify Moses and Elijah without being told who they were. I do too. Authentically, I'm right there with you. We only know that Yeshua was co conversing with them. It reminds me of when I experience dreams, I just have this knowledge of who someone is or what they are thinking about, thinking without ever talking to them. <laughs> Interesting. That's Verse 12 huh? confirms Matthew eleven thirteen 13 through 15 for all the prophets and the law prophesied unto John. And if you will receive it, this is Elijah, Eli Elias, Elias, is how it is in the Latin, which was for to come. He that hath ears to hear, let him hear. Then interesting in Matthew 17, 11, Yeshua says that Elijah is coming and will restore all things. Immediately, this verse makes me believe that Elijah is likely one of the three candidates I have in mind as one of the two witnesses during the first half of the seven year tribulation period. Hope I haven't confused you. The other two I have in mind are Moses and Enoch, but maybe I am but maybe I can discuss more on this here when we get to the book of Revelation. Cool. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Okay, uh, continuing on. Ricardo. Or, yeah, more, more, more comments on it. So. Uh, um, this is about Matthew 17, 3. Mm -hmm. um, how did they know right then and there those two who appeared with Yeshua were indeed Moses and Elijah? Maybe Elijah was with a cloak and Moses with a staff? That doesn't make much sense. Just throwing ideas. I mean, for example, if I saw Yeshua, a man and a woman without a belly button, I would assume right there that they were Adam and Eve. So why Moses and Elijah? P.S. Writing this, I realized something. Elijah's body never died, technically, and there was a dispute. Uh, Michal, Michael, and the devil over Moses' body mentioned by Jude. Hmm, rabbit hole indeed. Ahead. Uh, P.S. 2. <laughs> Another rabbit hole. If Moses indeed kept his body as Elijah kept his body, and Elijah came to earth in John's body, died in that body, but now he seems to be back in his old body again. Sorry to go technical on this one, but it feels like consciousness transferring, like a mind backup. Like it happened to you, Nate, that you had already, that you had already dead dying body on earth but you were with a conscious mind in a different body somewhere and then came back to your own now body uh, this also made me think that about the two witnesses that die and come back to life to be taken right there onto heaven uh, is anyone taking notes on rabbit holes as with golden nuggets yeah rabbit holes so many of them um i don't know did i miss them there were rabbit holes yeah <laughs> um gosh i'm yeah, I, I'm with I'm with Oguchuku. I'm with Oguchuku on the idea that when you know when you just know you just know who somebody mm. or who who somebody is or who what something represents, whether it be in a dream or or w once you wake up from the dream, you immediately get an understanding of what it was. And I think uh, it can it can because we do know too that they see that, that there's people in the Bible who say, "Who are you, Lord? Speak to me." Yes, and they say, "Don't call me Lord." Because it's not the Lord, right? right? Or it's a secret, right? So yeah. they there's a, so in certain circumstances it seems that they can know, in other circumstances it seems like they're like, oh, what's happening here? Yeah. 
Yeah. I, I don't mean to interrupt you. No, but no, I no. I'm, I'd, I'm in agreement. Because it's scripturally, there are people who don't know when yeah. they see, right? Yeah. And and it's definitely given to Peter to know who it is. Mm -hmm. um, Me? Or are you, what are no, you? No, I was just thinking about what Ricardo brought up. And again, it's a rabbit hole. And again, it's a, it's really something we'll probably talk about when we read Jude. But uh, the idea of Moses' body not being given to the bad guys. Very interesting. We talked about that. Well, we, during, during Joshua? Mm -hmm. I that, did anyways. I think I remember. Is it mentioned in Joshua or is it only mentioned in Jude, that part? Well, I don't know, but we talked about it in the Old Testament. Or is it in Jude you're talking about? Didn't we talk yeah, about like it? Yeah, like I... I Maybe we didn't. We, talk we about may it. have, but I don't remember this. I don't remember like the scripture from the Old Testament that talks about that episode. I may, I may have mentioned it in other. We videos may have though. mentioned it while we were reading it that there is an episode later on that we're going to read about this time in the Old Testament. I don't know. Anyways, not super important, but kind of yeah. cool. I don't want to take any thunder. Let's yeah. keep reading. You guys are leaving great comments, by the way. We're not yeah. commenting because we want to let other people comment. It's like we yeah. don't want it to be we, us. Yeah. Uh, uh, Vicky, uh, go ahead. Vicky Richardson. Vicky Richardson. Matthew 17, 5. He was still speaking when, behold, a bright cloud overshadowed them, and a voice from the cloud said, This is my beloved son with whom I am well pleased. Listen to him. My Bible cross references verses, Revelation 1 7. Behold, he is coming with the clouds, and every eye will see him, even those who pierce him. And all tribes of the earth will wail on account of him. I find it interesting that in Matthew, a bright cloud overshadowed them. And later, Yeshua tells them to tell no one until the Son of Man is raised from the dead. In the end, he will show himself to everyone and will come on a cloud for everyone to see. And we will all wail on account of him. This made the phrase, listen to him, really stand out for me. I've read this verse many times and just kind of skimmed over the meaning. It's a command from Yahweh. If we don't listen to him, it's not going to be good a good day for us when he returns. Come on, Vicky, I'm talking about right there, okay? It was good. That's awesome. Yep. Good find. Very, very good detail in the words there, in the wordage there. That's very awesome. Hmm. Yeah. Ricardo, Matthew 17, 9. Um, and as they came down from the mountain, Yeshua charged them, saying, Tell the vision to no man until the Son of Man is be risen again from the dead. This called my attention and reminded me that several times Yeshua says not to tell about something. Also, when Pilate asked Yeshua what is truth, Yeshua did not answer. And got me thinking when I began to read the Bible and became aware of who Yeshua was and is and how important all this is, I felt like sharing with everyone I could. And also something changed inside about truth and how hard it is to lie or say something that is not even a so-called white lie makes me now really uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. So from then to today, I tried to very, very specifically when I talk, especially if it refers to talking about the Bible, and for a time I felt like if I did not say something, it was kind of lying. Uh, with time I realized that not saying something or choosing words is not lying. That sometimes flipping the bucket of data over someone could be overwhelming and not well received. That there is an appointed time different for everyone to receive Yeshua, the truth that sets us free. Like in the movie Matrix, you can't just tell what the truth is. Every single one of us needs to experience it to understand it mm -hmm. and embrace it. Amen, Ricardo. Amen. Agreed, 100%. Mm -hmm. um, so, before we brush on the question at the beginning of this What's about the, the tabernacles, the three tabernacles. Yeah. Go ahead. I, I'm I'm drawing a blank. No, oh, you're not. I, I am. You got this. Uh, well, Reach down deep inside of your Junus and pull it up. You got this. <laughs> wow. Come on. Oh, I believe in deep you. Deep inside of my Junus. Get that DNA bubbling. All right. Hold on. Let me let me meditate on some uh, you know some potato pancakes. And Do you want me some blintzes? Do you want me to help you? Let me think about matzo balls. What was the first tabernacle built for? 
well, for to house the Ark of the Covenant and to be the temple. Okay. So why would he build three if he's seeing the three of them? And he says, I want to build one for each of them. He's not saying we want to build them for us to sleep in and have like a barbecue. Yeah, they're all holy. Yeah. Seeing the holiness in them. Yeah. And so really when he says he's building a tabernacle, he's building an, uh, a holiness, a, 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 a housing to house the holiness. An altar. Like, a, oh. like, like, so remember in the Old Testament, like Noah built an al altar, right? right? When they crossed over the Red Sea, the first thing they did was they built an altar, right? With the rocks. God said, place these rocks. Don't do it by your hand chiseled, right? So, yes. so all these altars throughout the Old Testament were being done as a way to honor so the whenever, moment whenever, and recognize the people. Very, yeah, that's very good. So See, whenever, I knew you'd know. <laughs> well, you're I mean, good, dude. No, you tell you yourself did this too one. much. You, you did were, this one. He had it in him the whole time. Well, you know. I recognized it when you said it, but I was drawing blanks. Um, so what Nathan is talking about? Whoa, whoa, whoa. hold on! Don't blame me. No, because <laughs> it it seems like the when yes, whenever uh, an Old Testament um, dude, uh, person dude, dude arena encountered God, mm -hmm. they would build an altar. That's right. Exactly what you just said. So you, um, said. you know you did it. I'm just messing. Go ahead. We're trying to stay focused. Ah, I'm sorry, guys. Ah, is... Go ahead. Who's on first? What's on second? No, what? I don't know. Is on third. I don't know. Was there a okay, home run? Go back. Ready? Take two. <laughs> <laughs> Whenever they would have an encounter yeah. with God, yeah, they would. They would. So, they would build it. Build an altar or some kind of yeah monument to that moment. So in this case, it's almost like a must do, like it's an innate response in Peter to just oh I gotta commemorate this. Let's build something here. To commemorate this mm -hmm. and also peter asks him a question before he says that what's the question he if asks? thou wilt no what is it okay for us to be here i thought he said it is okay it is good for us to be here is it good for us to be here? it is oh is it good for here. oh okay Peter said, oh it is good for us to be here oh see i got my brain's yeah. fried yeah it, yeah it is good for us to be here if thou wilt less but i my point is the same he's recognizing that this is a moment yeah so that's my that's my grounds personally yeah. that I stand on that the tabernacle is not they want to go camping. Yeah. Right. The tabernacle <laughs> is what, what are they saying? Oh, this is great. Uh, Ricardo says someone explain Junus, please. <laughs> <laughs> what? You don't have Jewish, that in Jewishness, your Jewishness. Your, your Jewishness. Yeah. That's funny. Um, Alex is Jewish. <laughs> By yeah. bloodline, so I yes. tell him, reach down and sides and find the answer, find the answer or... in your yes. ancestral storyline in the DNA, okay? Yes. Um. Yeah, so that's the thing that I personally am persuaded by that whole bit there, that it wasn't a, a camping, it was a, it was a altar more yeah. onto them to recognize the moment and that, you know, this was an important thing, like, uh, you know, to be recognized. interesting no yeah i mean it's no, it's, it's fine it's uh apparently akin to uh a tent or cloth hut literally or figuratively habitation or tabernacle mm -hmm. um i could see how people might think oh he just wanted to have a camp out with them but he didn't ask to build one for himself no he specifically named each one of them yeah yeah so i think i like three I li tents and three names yeah I like your theory. This is your theory. It's your theory. I just borrowed it from you. Out of my ear? Yeah. I it's heard just... I heard your thoughts, and I was like, I'll just say it, because he's wigging out. Unable to hear his own thoughts. He's unable to hear his thoughts. I hear your thoughts. I hear my thoughts. I hear his thoughts, and his thoughts, and her thoughts, and his thoughts. What? Who's talking? Which I don't voice? know. I'll, I'll let you know when they stop chattering. It's hard to tell. <laughs> I'll talk at once. Uh, uh, yeah. <laughs> We're totally not... Coo -coo 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 okay. Okay. Where are we, Ricardo? Seventy nine. Yes. yes. Wait. Did we answer all the questions though? What we about did. number one? Who is the that first? Was, that was. That was. That was number one. That was the first question. Like, what's up? What with was the other one though? Um. No, that's it. Oh. Mm -hmm. Oh. He, yeah. But did he just want to camp, or what's the deal with the tents? Yeah. Yes. Here, three tents. Okay. That was it. That was the question. Oh, excuse me. Sorry. Mm -hmm. Go ahead, Ricardo. You read. Ricardo. Matthew 17, 9, and as they came down from the mountain, Yeshua charged them. Wait, no, I did that one. Oh, okay. 
Yes, yeah, sorry. Jennifer Connelly. Thanks for making me look silly. Really mm, nice. My job. Okay, Jennifer Connelly. Take three. I feel bad, but I pretty much want to cite the whole chapter. Well, come on! Welcome to the club. It's amazing. Apologies in advance to Alex and Nathan for the long read. You guys are the best. No, you're the best. Yes, you are the best. Matthew 17, 9 through 12. Let's read. Now, as they came down from the mountain, Yeshua commanded them, saying, Tell the vision to no one until the Son of Man is risen from the dead. And his disciples asked him, saying, When then do the scribes say that Elijah must come first? Yeshua answered and said to them, Indeed, Elijah is coming first and will restore all things. But I say to you that Elijah has come already. And they did not know him, but did to him whatever they wished. Likewise, the Son of Man is also about to suffer at their hands. Was this a vision on the mountain? Different translations leave the word vision out. The connection of the prophecy from the Old Testament and fulfillment always makes me wonder how people can say this was written by man. No way. The simple fact that the Bible tells what's going to happen step by step, going back thousands of years and is still being fulfilled today, is living proof. Old Testament prophecy fulfillment, Malachi 4.5. Behold, I will send you Elijah, the prophet, before the coming of the great and dreadful day of the Lord. Malachi 4, 6. And he shall turn the heart of the fathers to the children, and the heart of the children of the fathers, lest I come and smite the earth with a curse. I can't believe I missed the John the Baptist Elijah connection. Reading it now, it seems crystal clear. Oh, wow. You didn't get it before? That's I'm not making fun. I'm saying I thought it, 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 the Bible actually clearly said it. Maybe you made it the first time you read through. I can relate to the disciples more than ever when I read this. He told them exactly what was about to take place. He performed the miracles. He had the God of the universe verified who he was. But in that moment of his death, when they thought he was no longer with them, they mourned him. In the waiting, they doubted. He was doing so much for them and future generations behind the scenes but because of the circumstances of what they were seeing, it was hard to grasp that faith. Man, that's a great comment. Really good stuff, Jennifer. I think it definitely applies to a lot of. We see the Lord has done a lot of in our lives, and yet we have moments where things aren't going our way, or things are seeming confusing in those moments, and we do. We go, well, maybe, maybe he's not here with me now, because this doesn't seem to be going as planned. So I can relate to. Hmm. He shall turn the hearts of the fathers to the children and the heart of the children to their fathers. I guess in reference of Elijah, right? Mm -hmm. Or is it the Lord that shall be doing this? No, no, it'll be Elijah. Uh, anyway, I got mesmerized by Malachi 4 6 for a moment, guys. Pardon me. I kind of fell into a. It could be the Lord. I it could be Yeshua he's talking about. Fell into a rabbit hole. You would. I would fall into a rabbit hole. I mean, that is the last line of the, the Old last Testament. Last line of the Old Testament, yeah. Remember ye, remember ye the law of Moses and my servant, which I command unto him in Horeb for all of Israel with the statutes and judgments. Behold, I will send you Elijah the prophet. Before the coming of the great and dreadful day of the Lord. And he shall turn the heart of the fathers to the children and the heart of the children to their fathers, lest they come and smite the earth with a curse. Hmm. Based on how that reads, I'm thinking it's Elijah. Which is what Elijah was, or John the Baptist was, crying out in the desert. Repent, repent. Because that was his job. He, call, he calls them to repentance to get straight and get right with for the coming of the of the Messiah. We also read about uh, how in the end times, fathers and sons and mothers and daughters and betray each other will betray each other. Mm -hmm. So this sounds like Elijah comes and reconciles them. Um, before end times or in this moment? Before the day of the Lord. Right. I will send you Elijah the prophet before well, the coming of the great and dreadful day of the Lord. Well, dreadful. Look at that word dreadful it may not mean what you think it means uh reverence fear terrible 
a fright. Maybe it does. Make afraid, dread. Okay. So, yeah, the great and terrible day of the Lord, the dreadful day of the Lord. Well, but what do you think that, that means? That sentence, the day of the Lord. Do you think it, you, it sounds to me like you're thinking it's the end time second coming? No, I, yeah, I think that there's actually, I'm not really sure what that means. Can you unhide Ricardo and uh, Jill? So you remember like how the, the old school, like knights in shining armor, they would say the year 1042, the year of our Lord. Was that because the Lord was still coming or the Lord had come? He had already come. Okay, so when it says the dreadful day of the Lord, before the coming of the great and dreadful day of the Lord, do you think that was Yeshua coming in this time as flat in the flesh, or do you think it's the second coming? I'm just trying to get this clear for everybody. Uh, I'm with you. I think we've read stuff um up until this moment that revealed to us that the prophecies of elijah coming don't have to be the end time prophecies mm -hmm. um i'm just stuck on this one because I'm, I'm maybe i'm just taking it out of context and i'm back to thinking about the great and dreadful day being the end day mm -hmm. or at least the end times um maybe the better clue is actually in matthew what we just read because there's a funny, there's some funny business here. So Matthew 17, hold on guys. Matthew 17, we are, um, uh, here we go. And his disciples asked him saying, why then say the scribes that Elijah must come, must first come? And Yeshua answered and said unto them, Elijah truly shall first come and restore all things. But I say unto you that Elijah is come already, and they knew him not, but have done unto him whatsoever they listed. Likewise shall also the Son of Man suffer of them. So uh, Yeshua is saying that the prophecy of Elijah first coming is indeed true, mm -hmm. but he's also saying Elijah has already come. Mm -hmm. I'm telling this to you. Mm -hmm. Elijah has already come, and they didn't recognize him, and they have done to him whatever they wanted, mm -hmm. and they're going to do to me to to the Son of Man the same thing, and he's going to suffer from them. Mm -hmm. So um, it seems to me that Yeshua is explaining to us that uh, maybe maybe Elijah's. Uh, here's here's a thought. Is it possible that Elijah's appearance as John the Baptist is not his last and final appearance here on earth? Is it possible that Elijah will appear again? Maybe, as some people have mentioned, uh, one of the two witnesses or whatnot, or who knows. Uh, is it possible that Elijah will appear again? He does appear after the death of John the Baptist. He does appear here in this vision with Moses and Yeshua. So, obviously, we know Elijah's soul is around um is it possible that he does appear again and both are true he appeared before uh yeshua's first coming as john the baptist and he'll appear perhaps before yeshua's second coming when things will be reconciled between the fathers and the children reconciled or when they fight they turn each other in. well first they fight but it says it says he will turn the hearts of the fathers to the children and because it's specifically a prophecy for israel i'm understanding because it's the end of malachi he will turn the hearts of the fathers to the children the hearts of the children to the fathers um whereas the prophecy of tribulation of bad time bad time before the end is is about everybody betraying one another families being split apart fathers and sons being of different minds and all of that you know what i'm saying mm -hmm. anyway what are you thinking who knows <laughs> ah yes <laughs> no tuned into the right channel nobody should be alone in there <laughs> 
why I always come and knock? You know, hello, hello, McFly. <laughs> you in there? So here's here's my thinking. If you just Google, and I'm sure everybody's doing it right now, type in what is the great and dreadful day of the Lord. Almost everybody is under the agreement that it's the end time second coming of the Lord, right? Joel 2.31, Acts 2.20. Let's see here. I think... Luke, let's see, as many of the children of Israel shall he turn to the, to the Lord their God, and he shall, this is Luke 1, 16 through 17, and many of the children of Israel shall he turn to the Lord their God, and he shall go before him in the spirit and power of Elijah, to turn the hearts of the fathers to the children and the disobedient to the wisdom of the just, to make ready a people prepared for the Lord. So this is what, this is what John the Baptist does. Because what does John the Baptist say the moment he sees Yeshua? Did you just read from Luke? Yeah. Okay. Good. But we what does John the loose. Baptist say when he first sees Yeshua? He's making the path straight, right? For Yeshua? He says, this is the one in whom I've been talking about, the one whose shoelaces sandals right. I'm not worthy to take. Right, right, right. So if he's been talking about this one, he's been preparing people, he's been baptizing people onto you know, uh, repentance, right? Not, not onto salvation, but, but repent, like into the heart of repentance and cleaning and cleanliness. My thinking is, is that, you know, I'm, I think I, I understand like why our minds and I'm, I'm partially in agreement. So I'm not trying to say that, you know, anybody's wrong, but what's more horrible, the Lord coming back and like annihilating killing everybody who like didn't receive him kind of thing right or the messiah is there in the flesh and you killed him because you didn't know he was there and if the and in the old testament who are the prophecies 90 percent of the time for the messiah so, no, no, no. <laughs> people wise. What? People wise. Who are the prophecies oh, for? For Israel. Yeah, for Israel, yeah, yeah, yeah. right? So, do you see my point? I I think the great and ter ter terrible day, you know, scary day of the Lord is the fact that he came, he calls them all to the truth, and they deny the truth. That's not that's not the place you want to be. You don't want to be in that place where the Lord presents the truth and you reject it that's worse than your body dying that's worse than your I, head getting chopped off i'm i'm with you on that it's definitely uh awful so that's all i'm saying yeah, I, yeah. i'm i'm just saying are You're we saying... are we taking this kind of christianese idea that great and terrible has to be the second coming that's a very good that, that's all I'm saying. I'm not saying I know. I'm just presenting it as a question. As a possibility is of a another way to see it. You know, man, you know. I like I like first, that First of all, is it not a great day when the Messiah gets revealed? I if if you think about because there's there's prophecies or yeah, there's prophecies in, in throughout the Old Testament about the great and dreadful day of the Lord that have to do with things being set right and vengeance, the Lord taking his vengeance. And, uh, well, and does it define that vengeance? No, it doesn't. And that's the thing is if he's taking a vengeance against all evil, uh -huh. then actually, as he teaches throughout what we're reading right now, this is the vengeance against all evil. And if you were going to take vengeance against evil itself, you would take your heel as the child of Adam and you would what? Crush the serpent and then you would allow the contract to be broken because you a sinless being would allow yourself to die on the cross because then you could make everything new again 
and it would be finished. So if you were going to take vengeance on everything evil, the cross is actually the victory already. Yeshua coming back the second time isn't when he wins. It's when he collects his winnings. He won on the cross. He returns. He collects his winnings. He collects his bride. Right? So I think as Christians, we think that when he comes back, that's when he wins his war. But he's already won it. So I'm in agreement with what you're saying. I think the cross and the day of the cross was the victory against the evil. Therefore, it was the great and terrible day because it was also where the line in the sand was drawn very clearly. And you're either on the side that's with him or you're on the side that's not with him. And the Jews rejected him. And the prophecy is, too, that they will reject, reject the stone. And that stone that they reject is the stone that is the, you know, the keystone. That's a horrible thing. Actually, for Israel, the great and terrible day would indeed be the first coming, would indeed be the day on the cross. Because what else happened on the day that he died? The veil is ripped. Come on, somebody! You know what I'm talking about over here? I know, Listen, we're skipping ahead. For those of you, who, oh, really? if there's yeah, anybody we're... here who hasn't read We're those... recalling backwards. We're recalling... <laughs> Back to the future with Nathan and I. Oh, oh, you mean because we're talking about the veil being ripped? We're, we're, yeah, we're, oh. just, we're a few chapters ahead, but we Everybody can't help it. About we can't that. help it because Everybody knows about the reason that. why we can't help it is because we're reading stuff that just makes, just needs, just wants to be talked about. Am I wrong? Am I wrong? You're not wrong, man. You're not wrong, man. Well, we've said enough about this, but this was great. I hope whoever is recording this, is somebody recording this? No. Nobody's recording this. Probably being deleted as we speak. Yeah. That was very good. You um, said it. I'm just over here listening to you. So. No, no, you, but you're no. on fire today, bro. You're Whoa, killing it. Right you know, I love, and these guys, these comments are amazing. The comments are amazing. I am barely keeping up. Okay. Okay. Ricardo, mm -hmm. Matthew 17, 14 through 21. Bro, the veil was ripped. Yeah. Evil was conquered. Death, where is your sting? I'm just saying. I'm so pumped right now. That's true. You can't get me talking about Yeshua on the no, cross, bro, without Nathan stuff. losing his mind. Uh, My mind's lost. You better you have, keep reading, because yeah. otherwise I'm going to go crazy. I'm gonna, we stay focused, I Mr. Can't, Wheeler. I can't. I'm focused on the cross. I can't stop mm. looking at the cross. <laughs> Listen, man, that's you see a what good I did focus. There? You stay focused. And I was like, I am focused. You see man, I see what you did there. See what Alex has to put I'm, up with when I'm he hangs barely, out with me? I'm barely keeping up with this guy. He's going a million miles a second. I, I, I apologize. No, it's good. No, this is good. This is good, Nathan. Go Ricardo. Ahead. Yes. Matthew 17, 14 through 21. Found that Matthew missed on some details that Mark tells. This is Matthew. And when they were coming and they were... Rewind. And when they were come to the multitude, there came to him a certain man kneeling down to him and saying, Lord, have mercy on my son, for he is a lunatic and sore vexed. For oftentimes he falleth into the fire and often into the water. And I brought him to thy disciples and they could not cure him. Then Yeshua answered and said, O faithless and perverse generation, how long shall I be with you? How long shall I suffer you? Bring him hither to me. And Yeshua rebuked the devil and he departed out of him. And the child was cured for that very from that very hour. Then came the disciples to Yeshua apart and said, Why could we not cast him out? And Yeshua said unto them, Because of your unbelief. For verily I say unto you, If ye have faith as a grain of mustard seed, ye shall say unto this mountain, Remove hence to yonder place, and it shall remove, and nothing shall be impossible unto you. Howbeit, this kind goeth not out, but by prayer and fasting. Sorry, Alex, to make you read all this, but Mark actually gives more detail that are missing here. No worries, Ricardo. I love reading, um, especially brilliant comments by you guys. Anyway, same by Mark. And when he came to his disciples coming down from the mountain with John, James, and Peter, he saw a great multitude about them, the disciples, and the scribes questioning with them. And straight away, all the people, when they beheld him, were greatly amazed and running to him saluted him and he asked the scribes what question ye with them with the disciples and one of the multitudes answered and said master i have brought unto thee my son which hath a dumb spirit and wheresoever he taketh him he teareth him and he foameth and gnashes with his teeth and pineth away and i spake to thy disciples and that they should cast him out and they could not so 
this just uh so this just had happened right while yeshua was gone a man came to the disciples with his son to cast out this demon but they couldn't so scribes were questioning all of this it continues he yeshua answered him to the father of this boy and said "O faithless generation how long shall i be with you how long shall i suffer you bring him on to me reading this made me rethink again about yeshua questioning the disciples faith but also this man's faith and they brought him unto him and when he saw him straight away the spirit tear him and he fell on the ground and wallowed foaming and he asked his father how long is it ago since this came unto him and he said of the ch and he said of a child and oftentimes it hath cast him into the fire and into the waters to destroy him but if thou canst do anything have compassion on us and help us this made me cry i felt I felt as in here the father asking for mercy to end his son's life. Oh. Yeshua said unto him, If thou canst believe, all things are possible to him that believe it. Seems like Yeshua knowing already what was going on, but asking anyway and making the father say out loud what was going on, made the father to feel right there all the weight and sorrows they were experiencing. And straight away the father of the child cried out and said with tears, Lord, I believe. Help thou mine unbelief. He's not asking to cure the boy right now. He's asking for faith. When Yeshua saw that the people came running together in everyone's faces, he rebuked the foul spirit, saying unto him, Thou dumb and deaf spirit, I charge thee, come out of him, and enter no more into him. And the spirit cried and rent him sore and came out of him, and he was as one dead, insomuch that many said he's dead. But Yeshua took him by the hand and lifted him up, same as with Peter in the water, and he arose. And when he was come into the house, his disciples asked him privately, Why could not we cast him out? And he said unto them, This kind can come forth by nothing but prayer, but by prayer and fasting. Question, does this mean for you that faith, fasting, and prayer are required for both sides, the healing and the healed? at least for this kind of spirit. I don't think it means it for the for the ill. You mean for the one who's possessed? Yeah, I don't because how are you going to get them to yeah, fast and pray? Pray if they're possessed. So it can't be onto them. And we will read passages later that tell, say that we can heal others which this actually is a demonstration but we can heal others even if they don't believe. You have a faith that your faith can be the faith required for somebody's healing. So also take a look at, uh, what is that, Loin Lona? So they, they pull a good scripture there. You want to read Where? that, Joel? Mm -hmm. the, Lo Lona. Lona. Joel 2.31, The sun shall be turned into darkness and the moon into blood before the great and terrible day of the Lord come. Okay, so now reading that, just, what, what do you got? There's another one. Okay, go ahead, read. Well, no, go ahead. You... No, no. So you reading that, anybody hearing that, right? Let's see in the comments. Before I say anything, let's read in the comments. Just hearing Joel 2.31, the sun shall be turned into darkness and the moon into blood before the great and terrible day of the Lord come. Okay, so based on that, would you, would that confirm an end time second coming to you? Uh, not necessarily. Dan has a comment. Uh, not necessarily because that could be an eclipse. Right. And there was one. Right. Uh, okay. So. But I think that people think of that. So let's read what Mary has written. Just just while we're on this topic, let's read what she's she's written to see what she's adding. It's a great practice to regularly. Yeah, yeah oh. that's Mary. Yeah, yeah. It's a great practice to regularly question our long held assumptions. But would the great and dreadful day of the Lord not be the same as the day of the Lord used in other scriptures? Second Peter 3. 310 the day of the lord will come as a thief in the night in which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise and the elements shall melt with fervent heat and the earth also and the works that are therein shall be burned up that's why i am of i am inclined to consider the idea 
Mm -hmm. that the great and terrible day of the Lord, or the day of the Lord, is not specifically one day, nor is it necessarily, nor is it something that only happens, that only manifests once. It's but but I'm just saying, like I could I could imagine the possibility. I'm not saying I I I know the answer. Okay, read the next one. I'll go Chuku. Ogochuku, the great day of the Lord is near, it is near and hath hasteth greatly, even the voice of the day of the Lord. The mighty main the mighty man shall cry there bitterly. The day is a day of wrath, a day of trouble and distress, a day of wasteness and desolation, a day of darkness and gloominess, a day of clouds and thick darkness, a day of the trumpet and alarm against the fence cities and against the high towers. And I will bring distress upon men, that they will that they shall walk like blind men, because they have sinned against the Lord, and their blood shall be poured out as dust, and their flesh as the dung. Neither their silver nor their gold shall be able to deliver them from the day of the Lord, Lord's wrath, but the whole land shall be devoured by the fire of his jealousy, for he shall make even a speedy riddance of all of them that dwell in the land. Zephaniah 1, 14 through 18. Yeah. So. So uh, go, go, to, go to Dan's. This one? Mm hmm Dan says, not sure if my comment showed up here. So here it is again, Matthew 17, 20. I think that's, uh, we got that one, I think, Dan. Let me double check. Yeah, we have that one. No, we haven't gotten there yet. We haven't gotten there yet. Is yeah. it a day of the Lord one, though? Uh. No. Okay. So, to the first comment, scroll up. To the first comment, Lona, Joel 2.31. The sun shall be turned into darkness and the moon and blood before the great and terrible day of the Lord come. So, it's just like this, right? Think about Abraham. He's got to go sacrifice his son. Well, he has two sons. The other son is not, not a son, but one son is the prodigal. Right. Well, the no. one he wanted with Sarah. It's the it's the beloved. The beloved son. It's the beloved son, right? So it's not that that there isn't another son. He could say son, and there's still a son. What I'm saying is, is that in this particular usage of words, there's two words. Great and terrible. Now read Mary's. There's no terrible. Great and dreadful day. Yeah, great and dreadful day. Oh, wait, no. Uh, right, right, I'm sorry. Mary's is day of the Lord. Day of the Lord. But there's no terrible or dreadful, right? Okay, now let's read the scriptures leading up to Lona's Joel 1, right? We're at Joel 2.31. Watch this. And it shall come to pass afterwards that I will pour out my spirit. So it shall come to pass afterwards that I shall pour out upon all flesh or i shall pour out my spirit upon all flesh and the sons and your daughters shall prophesy your old men shall dream dreams and young men shall have visions now this obviously ties into end time stuff right and also upon servants and upon the handmaids and days will i pour out my spirit i will show wonders in heaven and in the earth and blood and fire pillars of smoke and the sun shall be turned into darkness and the moon into blood before the great and terrible day of the Lord come, and it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be delivered. For in Mount Zion and in Jerusalem shall be deliverance, as the Lord has said, and the remnant whom the Lord shall call. So if Yeshua comes back, it means that rapture has already happened. If he's on earth second time on the mount, it means rapture has already happened. So if his second coming is the great and terrible day of the Lord of Joel 2.31 and the same great and terrible day of the Lord here. It means that after Yeshua comes back, his feet touch the ground and they say, Lord, where did you get these wounds? And he says, in the house of my friends, then they can raise their hands and they can say, well, I believe now then. And he says, okay, cool, you're saved. And I'll give you the spirit and you'll be able to prophesy and go do all these things. Because that's what it's saying. It's going to happen after. So my point is to say, is that what happened after Yeshua died on the cross and rose again? The day of Pentecost, right? And the day of Pentecost did what? 
it caused the Holy Spirit to fall on the people, and they, they, they like prophets, the average person was being filled with the Spirit and was prophesying and was doing all these things, right? And then those who would raise their hands and believe would be received and saved, according to these scriptures, right? So does that not sound like the first coming? Because if Yeshua comes back at a second coming and we start believing then, then we can just wait to find out if this whole Bible thing is legit before we start saying we're believing. Um, Am I making sense? Uh, yes. Am I making sense I, to I, you guys I, out there I'm, in the I'm cyber just, worlds? I'm reviewing. I need to look at this context of Joel too. Uh, and because I, 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 I understand what you're saying, mm. and I, I am in agreement if that's how it's laid out. But I don't remember. I, I don't remember. Let's see. And it shall come to pass afterwards. Okay, no. That's why I know from. that I'm. Yeah, I know. I'm trying, where did you start? Twenty six. No, I started here. And it shall come to pass afterwards, because it's staying from here afterwards. This thing afterwards, right? But after what? After this thing? Go, yeah. Well, go ahead and read it if you want. So, uh, that's what I'm saying. I'm looking. So, twenty five. And I will restore to you the years that the locust hath eaten, the canker worm, and the caterpillar, and the palmer worm, my great army which I sent among you. And well, let's read the whole eat. thing, because we, otherwise we're going to fall yeah. short, right? Let's read the whole thing. Well, are we, we going to do that now? Yeah, why not? Okay, let me... We got me, time? Let me switch to... Oh, yeah, that's easier. Thanks. Switch to... Joel. Joel 2. 2. Joel 2. Hold on. Okay. Day of the Lord. So 2-1. Should we start there? Yeah. So this is this is Joel 2.1. Blow ye trumpet in Zion and sound alarm in my holy mountain. Let all the inhabitants of the land tremble. For the day of the Lord cometh, for it is nigh at hand. Nigh at hand means? Close. Okay. And the day of darkness and of gloominess, a day of clouds and of thick darkness, as the morning spread upon the mountains. A great people and a strong, there hath not been ever like Ever the like, neither shall be any more after it, even to the years of many generations. A fire devoureth before them, and behind them a flame burneth. The land is as the garden of Eden before them, and behind them a desolate wilderness. Ye, the nothing shall escape them. The appearance of them is as the appearance of horses and of horsemen, so shall they run. Like the noise of chariots on the top of mountains shall they leap, like the noise of flames and fire devoureth the stubble, as a strong people set in a battle array. Before their face the people shall be much pained, all faces shall gather blackness. They shall run like mighty men, they shall climb the wall like men of war, they shall march every one on his way, they shall not break their ranks, neither shall one thrust another, they shall walk every one in his path, and they shall fall upon the sword, they shall not be wounded, okay? They shall run to and fro in the city, they shall run upon the wall, they shall climb up upon the houses, they shall enter in at the windows like a thief, the, the earth shall quake before them, the heavens shall tremble, the sun of the moon shall be darkened, and the stars shall withdraw their shining, and the Lord shall utter his voice before his army, for his camp is very great, for it is strong and ex. Uh, executeth his word for the day of the Lord is great and very terrible. Uh, who can abide in it? Okay. That definitely sounds like end times. Yeah. Cause they can't be killed when they get stuck. Right. Okay. So hold on, let's see. And therefore also know the Lord turn ye to your hearts in the fasting and weeping. Scroll so I can see. Should we just continue reading? Well, or, yeah. Or I mean, get, I mean, that was pretty seal the deal for me. Yeah, I think Joel two is talking about the the end end. But let's just see thirty one. I just want to see if thirty one is recapping another thing. Okay, so shall eat plenty of satisfy the praise in the name of the Lord God and the wonders and people shall never be ashamed. Yeah. 
Scroll up. Sorry. It's talking about the children. Yeah, the children yeah. of Zion. Yeah. Um. Look at this. The Lord had pity. Yeah. I think you're right. I think you're right. That tells it. I mean, is it possible that... It's uh, twice? It, it, well... Yeah, and is is it possible that the because Yeshua says to them, but I tell you now as if he's revealing to them a secret. Right. And he says also in prior prior scripture, he says, If you will receive it, I tell you Elijah has already come. It's almost as if Yeshua's first coming is like a preview of uh, it's 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 I, I don't mean to say it is a preview as in like it's only I don't mean to say it's not important. Right. What I mean to say is that it's a, it's a hidden coming. It's a hidden coming, including the fact that Elijah did also come, um, uh, also kind of as a hidden coming. And, and they didn't know. And they didn't know. Mm -hmm. And then when he does come the next time, he will come as Elijah, and they will know, the Israelites, I mean, mm -hmm. will know who that is. Yeah. And they will have an opportunity knowing who that is to realize they're now in the day of the Lord. And when Yeshua comes and they go, where'd you get these wounds? They will perhaps understand that, oh my God, the day of the Lord this is, is about Yeshua. And Yeshua really did come before. And yeah. the, the, the Christians aren't just like weirdos, weirdos, you know? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um. See, this is good. This is why teamwork makes the dream because, work. Because if you think about well, the it, the holy dream work. Well, if you think about it, we're still on what's it called? Uh, that's okay. Uh, here, I'll go back to no more tiny us. If you think about it, that's the gift of um, that's the gift of Yeshua in in the time after Pentecost till the time of the end is that the Christians, right? This whole other quote unquote tribe that wasn't part of quote unquote Israel or whatever, whatever the old prophecies were, who they were directed towards, they actually get the first fruits of what it's like to be with Yeshua. Do you know what I'm saying? So, so mm -hmm. for, for, for this group of people, for these 12 disciples to be shown Elijah to be, for them to be, um, for them to, for, for them to have it explained to them or revealed to them that Elijah did also come to to usher in Yeshua's coming is it kind of fits with the idea that um Christendom is going to get to experience the Holy Spirit before uh before the people to whom such things are promised in the Old Testament. Does that make sense? What I'm saying? Say it again. I was so multitasking. Like, so so Israel is made Israel Israel receives all these promises for reconciliation, day of the Lord, they will be taken back, they will receive. Yeah. Right. There would be in Joel it talks about the Holy Spirit pouring out on them, right? On all flesh. Um, but uh Christians have gotten to experience the Holy Spirit pouring out way before the end times, right? So just like they get the first glimpse of what that's like. They also got a secret revealed to them, as in, hey, Elijah already came for you guys. You know what I mean? Elijah already came before my first coming, before Yeshua's first coming. And therefore, um, those in Christ from the time of the cross are receiving something uh, ahead of what's to come after the day of the Lord. Does that make sense? Yeah, it makes sense. And Lona just gave another another passage, which is the passage, Lona, I was thinking about that you were thinking about, or I assumed you were thinking about when you let, made your first comment, which is Matthew 24, 29. Immediately after the tribulation of those days shall the sun be darkened, and the moon shall not give her light, and the stars shall fall from heaven, and the powers of the heaven shall be shaken. That's that's a passage that I thought you were referring to when you quoted Joel 2.31. But at the same time, the day that Yeshua died, the sky was darkened and the earth shaked and the veil was ripped 
and stars also is another word used for angels so the angels were defeated or the angels that fell were also defeated on the day of the cross so all i'm trying to say is i like, i'm i just want to be sure that i know what is the horrible or great and terrible day of the lord because i see symbolism in both right and the thing that confuses me i'll, I'll totally confess i'm i'm a little confused Like, is there prophesying in the millennia? Like, is there people coming to faith in the millennia? We know that people can denounce Yeshua in the end end of the millennia. So can are people coming to faith? Like, are the people that, let's say there's people being born in the millennia, do they have to come of age and come to their own faith as well? So it's kind of like this life, but you just have a body that won't die or grows old as it ours grow old now well I'm, is this giving us an insight into the millennia when, i guess is what i'm really the, saying yeah because when i think back to the millennia and and for those of you guys who have been on this ebrt journey what a blessing it's been because i think immediately i think to uh 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 Oh my gosh. I hope this is Ezekiel. all making sense because might be <laughs> making sense to us. But yeah. yeah. When Go I ahead, think Ezekiel. of the millennia, I think of Ezekiel. Yeah. Because Ezekiel gets the description of what temple life will be like or what the temple will be like. And then there's clues throughout the Old Testament prophets, and I think including Joel, but definitely Zechariah and others, about the role of God's people in the millennia yeah. and it talks about how they're actually all each one of them are going to be priests essentially priests mm -hmm. and living in jerusalem and living in the temple complex whenever someone would come and make a pilgrimage to them from around the nations mm -hmm. uh to sit and eat with one of the inhabitants of jerusalem and to have a conversation with them and to eat from their bowl. Okay, just 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 in case anybody is new, the New Jerusalem. The New Jerusalem. And it's and it's a totally different shape and it's kind yes. of in a different place. Yes. So just just making sure, like it's in he's the, talking about this the millennium. I'm talking about the Ezekiel, Ezekiel's temple, Jerusalem. I know. I'm just saying yeah. that in case anybody doesn't know that. That because yeah. you say Jerusalem, they're thinking like right now, Jerusalem. Right. Okay. And so, go so, ahead. so it talks about that God's people will be now the inhabitants of this place. Mm -hmm. And to come and to literally just hang out with them, eat with them, and fellowship with them will be like making a pilgrimage to the tabernacle mm -hmm. so so that tells me that perhaps what's described here is all of them having prophecy all of them having visions and dreams and just being totally turned on to the spirit mm -hmm. is that they're all like pro they're prophets all, yeah they're so all like, literally priest prophets that's exactly mm -hmm. that none not a single one of them will be unable or, right uh, or turned off or un unconnected unconnected yeah to to god yeah. so um yeah and i think that the saints that are uh, uh transfigured and and raptured and transfigured are actually even close that they're even before this group they are the army that is being described on the great right. and terrible day yeah and their placement in the whole thingy majig thing is is to be like in, the hierarchy of the, the temple is thingy majiggery thank, thank you i i hate to use words hierarchy because i'm scared to claim any kind of worthiness anywhere but you know what i'm saying the hierarchy yes they're invited to sit on the throne with yeshua mm -hmm. so they're in an even higher place than the outside temple dwellers than the outside temple dwellers are the people who walk the highway who are turned on like it's talking about here at the end uh, and the day of the Lord, they're turned on. They walk the highway to the promised Jerusalem, which is the way that we read which in is the Old the Testament. The way that we read in the Old Testament, they become the teachers of the rest of the nations, and they're no longer looked at as, man, those terrible Jews who did terrible things, who, who, and all the things that people, all the anti-Semitism that Jews have experienced throughout uh, existence will be gone forever. They will always be looked upon now as these are Israel. This is God's people. And they will have God backing them up in that role. And this is what it will look like. And some of the stuff I've just put together throughout the other scriptures is what it will look like. But the people who are the saints, who are transfigured, who are caught up in the air, that's an even, that's the one where Yeshua, I believe, 
I'm persuaded at the moment anyway, that's the ones that Yeshua talks about. For those who endure until the end, I will invite to sit on my, my throne. throne with me. So that's a, another sort of circle of trust. <laughs> you know, I hate to use that term because that's from a, a, a movie jokey line. But that's another circle that's like on the inside of this greater temple complex, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. We're going to see more on that one. So this is one of my favorite passages. And Lona... I hope I'm saying your name right. Uh, it just left it. John 17, 21 through 23. That they all may be one as thou, Father, art in me, and I in thee. That they also may be one in us, that the world may believe that thou hast sent me. And that the glory which thou gavest me, I give them. That they may be one, even as we are one. I in them, and thou in me, that they may be made perfect in one. And that the world may know that thou hast sent me and hast loved them as thou hast loved me. Yeah. So I guess, too, what, what you're saying, Lona, in, in quoting that passage is you're saying, too, is that, like, we don't experience that pure transformation or, or pureness. I guess that's just the right word, pureness, until millennia. So it's promised unto us who receive him, who believe him, who surrender to them, to give their life to them. But we don't have that full flow as he had the full flow until we probably get our new bodies. Because then we're probably not fighting the flesh like we fight the flesh here. Right. Do you get what I'm trying to say? Yeah, we... And we also would have died, which matches with uh, the Levitical law, right? We will physically actually die will be given new bodies, which will not be tainted, which will not be stained with sin. So we, we still will be covered by the blood. But what I'm saying is, is that we're given those new bodies because we were covered by the blood. Just as Yeshua was given a new body, just as these two gentlemen, Moses and Elijah, were given at least the bodies that they're in a bodily form or spirit form, right? Am I making sense? I think I think what you, I think so, and what you sparked in my mind when you said that is that when we when 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 later on we'll read about when Paul is talking about being caught up in the air and and all, all, and Yeshua talks about it. It isn't. I I I think I feel that it isn't just for the 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 people who, or maybe it isn't for them at all. The people who survive the tribulation time and and are there and are faithful, but it's also all of the other thousands and thousands or thousands of years of Christians who went to their death in the name of the Lord, who went to their, who went to, who suffered greatly, who as, you know, picked up their cross and, and walked it. Um, uh, they too will be caught up in the air, given new bodies and well, the dead the will rise first. Yeah. yeah. So, so like that that group of people spans all time since uh since uh uh the uh at least pentecost and possibly in some cases even before that mm -hmm. so um um yeah yeah we really uh, for those of you i'm who just maybe, here for the pie <laughs> for those of you who who uh, maybe haven't read ahead yet, and we're just downloading all this stuff on you. I guess it's because it, it's we're moved to do it, so it's all good. But uh, this is great. I think this is really good because it it creates a lot of clarity and it allows us, it allows for us to relax. Because every time we read something that, uh, you know, where 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 there's a, there's a seeming co there, there may be some sort of contradiction where our minds are detecting. We start to freak out, right? I've experienced this. We've experienced this throughout the Old Testament. Was there a contradiction? No, but oh. like people get confused. Like, wait, if Elijah came in the day of the Lord, like that's how this whole conversation started. Wait, yeah. So when is the day of the Lord? Let's really look at it. We mm. just did. And, and I think we've, we're coming to the conclusion that the day of the Lord, the, the promises span across time um, and and uh yeshua is telling the disciples for you i will reveal a secret for you elijah has already come he's john the baptist and here i am and things are going to be different for you and all of the people that believe like you believe things are going to be different for them and then for the rest for the promises of those who did not receive or did not have a chance to receive or, or were, were stuck in some you know 
they just they they didn't get the opportunity the opportunity or maybe they were stuck in uh, a, a strange faith that is totally about god but seems to be blind about yeshua i don't know who i'm talking about you guys maybe do um i, I have no idea what you just said but go ahead the jews are you being so oh yes i'm being okay, funny gotcha. okay um and we've talked about this a lot throughout like how do they not did they not read isaiah this or did that did they do they read the same book what how right. did they not see how they that yeshua this? is the prophet right. i'm sorry is the messiah mm. and they say he's just a prophet like what happened there and then we read about how there's going to be a supernatural blindness upon them mm -hmm. so um uh my point is that as yeshua says to peter uh you don't know this because you figured it out you know this because the lord has revealed, revealed it, to it to you too. he's revealing it to the disciples hey if you will receive it elijah already came mm -hmm. And what you're about to, if you continue receiving from me, you will now experience things promised to those after the great and terrible day of the Lord. That's essentially what I believe he's saying. So if, if, if as, as they, as they embrace Yeshua and they embrace everything and then they, and then they have Pentecost, they now have this direct connection through the Holy Spirit to God. I'm not saying it's going to be as pure as it is when they're, when, when we're all hopefully on that other side. But I'm saying like they're getting like a really, really they're they're building the bride. They're they're having a uh they're having a first experience of that covenant, is what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't cancel the fact that that covenant may still come at a different time for some of the rest of the people. Or to say it plainly, it doesn't cancel the fact that, that some of to some of Israel that covenant may still come. It's just going to come at a different time. And it's going to look different. And they're not going to play necessarily the same role. But the promises made in the Old Testament by Joel and stuff, uh, they, they, they will apply. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I hope I'm making sense, guys. I know, I know I've kind of talked a lot. No, you're making sense. Um, um, Ricardo says, for you guys, Moses and Elijah were with Yeshua with their original human bodies or with their new spiritual bodies? I think they were in a spirit form, manifested, but in a spirit form. I don't know. That's what I get, but that's... Because he, they say that he transfigured, which I, it's hard for me to explain, but I'm, I don't know if it was... I mean, his physical body, Yeshua's physical body could have morphed. I suppose they could have been there in physical form. Maybe that was the whole point. See how these two were dead and now they're risen with me, standing with me. That's what's going to happen to you. I feel that's the message. Yeah. Right? That's the whole message, right? Because yeah. then he says, this is going to happen to me. I'm going to die and then I'm going to raise. And that's the whole message on to you, which is what Paul says. If there is no resurrection, our faith is vanity. Right. Because really what we're hearing from... So there's so much happening right here. I probably, you know, we could literally, like I'm biting my tongue so much because I see that there's so much here. And, and I don't know if we're actually, I mean, we will discuss it, especially in Mark and Luke and stuff, but it's like, this really is the promise of the cross. It's resurrection. And it's and it's the relationship of of John 17 fulfilled. But he's telling us, you're going to hear stuff. And if you believe in what I'm saying, if you receive what I'm saying, you're going to experience what you hear. But you have to believe it. And then it will happen to you. And then the day of Pentecost comes, and that, that is the Holy Spirit moving in them. That's the helper, which is interesting that Yeshua calls it the helper, right? Because it helps them to believe. It helps them to have understanding and remembrance, which is the Bible is the book of remembrance, right? So like all these things, like there's just so many unbelievable layers here that like, I hope this is making sense of the viewers, but you know, and that we're not just rambling. Like, I feel that this is really important because you're talking about the revelation of the day of the Lord. And, and it's funny because it was that really the conversation or was it really discussing what's happening with this moment? What's happening with the transfiguration? What's happening with them building a tent? Like there really wasn't so much talk about the day of the Lord. I feel like we kind of got stuck on the day of the Lord thing. I know I did because I'm like, well, let's let's be clear. Cause I'm like, it sounds to me like it could be 
that day that he dies on the cross is the day of the Lord, but that doesn't really, but it, if that is the day of the Lord, then what's his return called, right? So, so this was something, and now what I feel is, is that in our discovery of the word or the vernacular of, uh, or phrase of the day of the Lord, now I've gotten a whole new extra tidbit, not a whole new perspective or insight, but a whole new tidbit about what the millennial will look like, which is what you were putting together. There's the inner courtroom, which is that we shall be invited to sit on his throne. Those are the resurrected. Then there are those who were resurrected, but were still, let's just say, right with the Lord or receive the Lord to their degree that they could, right? Or receive the Lord post day when they, when they had a chance in the millennia, and they get to serve in the temple. And then there are those who I guess are either born later or come later to some degree or fashion, and they come and they are ministered onto by the people in the court. Yeah. It, right. It, it, so this is like a this is like a whole if you've ever wondered what does the millennia look like, I think right now in this moment, while we're sitting here reading Matthew 17, which is not a scripture that would have Led given to, me yeah. revelation about the millennia, <laughs> right? But it has. It is totally given revelation because it has I, I'm I'm persuaded now that the that the great and terrible day of the Lord is the second coming but as you said he's allowing the apostles to have a pre a pre-experience and for those who do receive the pre-experience we all have the ability and i don't know about it, like now i'm speaking out of turn but i believe he specifically i'm in agreement with you he's specifically saying on to it especially these apostles standing with him you have the ability to have the pre millennia experience yes and you will have the fullness of it if you should receive it right yes. now we will find out later how to receive that i believe as we continue to read but this is pretty fascinating because the promise of the great and terrible day of the lord is that's going to be the case for a multitude of people that didn't receive pre which is a very weird and confusing thing in regards to because the judgment, salvation the judgment doesn't come until after, after millennium. i know that's the other thing a lot of people think that judgment comes on rapture day so, or, or his second coming and that's not the case it's after the millennium the millennial kingdom is god's israel being done super total right no chance of it going wrong. right no mistake because yeshua is king of all for a thousand yeah. years which is the prophecy and so in order so the pre-millennial millennial experience that is happening to uh, those that re believe and receive Christ's teachings and Christ's promises, that gives people the opportunity to willingly receive it. When the millennial actually comes, there won't be much of a choice. God will be present and all will receive and all who nations who reject or any individual who rejects God is going to receive immediate retribution. I remember reading about that, about the diseases that come, mm -hmm. and, and the curse is immediate. So, so life in the millennial will be each individual's relationship to God, which is the new covenant, which is the Yeshua covenant. It's not going to be based on entire nations anymore. But those that are in God's nation, those people who are in Israel, uh, in the new Israel, with the new giant temple and the new Jerusalem, those people are going to be unquestionably like, they're going to have it connected. That's what the promise is. They're going to have it connected. And I was just going to say, when you talked about the resurrected, I'm not sure that there won't be resurrected among those people too. But I'm saying the saints who have died for Yeshua on uh, martyrs, you know, martyrs, the yeah. special crown, they the, get a special, the special crown. crown martyrs are resurrected and transfigured to receive new bodies. Uh, the other ones, I don't know. I don't know. Maybe they're just resurrected and they're given, uh, uh, you know, full health and a thousand years of life. Or I don't know. I'm now going into areas I haven't. I, I'm not necessarily receiving information about. So, but I, I just, yeah, I'm in agreement with you. We did not start out Matthew 17 today thinking we were even going to be talking about the subject, and it sort of just happened. And. Um, well, I think it's, I think I personally, I think, you know, I'm kind of, I, I, 
I feel like I'm a little bit to blame that we chased this rabbit hole in the video, but at the same time, I'm not apologetic about it because right, if we move forward without an understanding of what is the great and terrible day of the Lord, then we could move forward with confusion. Exactly. And we could be everything that we hear that builds, since every word builds upon the word before, if we have a, a, a skewed definition and concept, then we're building that on a skew foundation. Right? Agreed. So I think that, again, you know, I feel partially to blame for this rabbit veering off, but I'm also not apologetic. I think it was great. And I'm yeah. so grateful for everybody, you know, throwing in scripture and giving their two cents. And yeah, this is really, this is, this is what I, I love about our fellowship here, guys. Uh, this is this, this moment we just had though might be long. <laughs> it's so important. I feel it's so important. I feel, I don't want to move forward until uh, like, this is what me and Alex do, by the way, when we read privately before we come on the videos. If there's something like this, we will spend, no exaggeration, six to eight, four to six hours we have spent really like researching, going through scripture, you know, and we won't move forward until we are like light bulbs on, crystal clear, spirits confirming it. True? Absolutely. We've, we've told you this in the past that this is what we do, but I feel like now we're doing it with you guys on camera and it's like, does it get better than this? No, it's awesome. And I, that's exactly what I was going to say is when I, we've have we would have moments before where there's a lack of clarity, not yeah. necessarily a contradiction, but what something may seem like a contradiction, just a lack of clarity. There's a, yeah, there's a, and there's a confusion. It would, it would be, it would be, both of us would kind of look at each other and we'd hit the, you know, you, you'd hear the, you know, the, the record scratch, mm -hmm. the, the wall stops and we just start hammering on it and sometimes it seems like a chasm we will never bridge like oh my gosh this is a mistake and we'll pray and we've testified to this before while reading the old testament with you guys we will pray we will ask for guidance and and i every single time to things that seem completely unrepairable mm -hmm. we would receive an answer we would both look at each other we'd both be satisfied with the answer we'd both reread the stuff and realize how could we ever have not Missed seen it. that before exactly and so we encourage you guys what you just did here with us you forced the issue in an awesome way you said wait hold on a second mm -hmm. now i'm not clear here's some scripture about the day of the lord mm -hmm. what what are we really talking about here guys let's just get clear yeah you had the courage to say, we're not moving past this until we, we were clear. Mm -hmm. And and it forced us to look, it forced us to read, it forced us to think and talk and receive something that helped. I know I'm satisfied enough to move forward, but, um, uh, and, and I know my brothers too. And you may have already been convinced that it was the second coming. And like I said, it's Christianese. Most scholars, I said that, the Christianese, like it's, it, if you say great and say, you know, terrible day of the Lord, it, it's, it's always perceived, I believe in Christendom as, you know, the second coming. I'm the one who had a struggle with it because I'm like, I see so many similarities to the day of the cross and the verbiage and the, and the, and the events match. So again, you know, I, I appreciate the fact that if you guys already knew and you're like, I didn't get in a revelation today. Well, that's cool. Like, but this is a tool as well for people out there reading the Bible for the first time, learning this stuff for the first time. So even if you didn't get anything today, your participation and your fellowship, like allowed me to at least go and digest this a little bit further and really come to a more solid ground on which one I think it was. And I did say, I'm not saying I know. Right. I did say, I don't know which one it is. And I started kind of presenting it. I was like, does this sound like end times to you? Does this sound like it could be right now? So yeah. it's like, I was asking the questions, ironically, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. and I say ironically only in the sense that I think a lot of you guys, you know, you expect that you expect that, you know, I got nothing new to learn <laughs> yeah. and that's not the case. You just saw me learn something. Well, I got hard confirmation on something that I myself was, was uh, uh, wobbly around, you know, yeah. I wasn't fully solid on it because I had enough knowledge to say that it could apply here and enough knowledge to say it could apply there. So which one is it? actually it's, it's now really clicking in my mind because of the, because Yeshua said, if you will receive it, if you will receive it, it is, it, it, it is Elijah. And that's the whole point, because if you receive Yeshua, you are receiving the millennial promises. Well, wait, wait, wait. You, you lost me. What well, does that have to just, do with Elijah? You just, uh, no, I'm saying, uh, sorry, I, I, 
I got excited because when Yeshua reveals to the disciples that John the Baptist is Elijah, it's Elijah. He says, "If you will receive it, he is Elijah come already." Yes. Just like we just talked about, if you receive Yeshua, receive the Holy Spirit, mm -hmm. you are already receiving at least some portion of the millennial, millennial promises. promises. So if you receive that he is Elijah, you are receiving that the day of the Lord has already come. You're receiving that you're about to receive the promises of the Old Testament for what happens to believers and God's people after the day of the Lord. And... And the disciples experienced that on Pentecost. They they experienced prophesying. They experienced like they experienced stuff that wasn't given to to anyone in the Old Testament, not in that kind of in mass. You know what I mean? Yeah, I'm. I got there. There's something I gotta pray about. This is intense. What you're saying, what, what this is saying, I don't know if anybody else is having the same thoughts as me. Is anything sticking out as like weird to you? Like like is like a game changer in this dialogue other than just like the body stuff? It's really ringing good with me. Uh, what do you mean I know. by weird? I think I, I think what you think is good is what you would always hope for or you believed in your spirit that we talk about off camera all the time. Yeah. And I kind of get on your case about it. Yes. Okay, that's what I'm picking up. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I, I've been having an inkling that something like that is somewhere it's in somewhere there. in there. Yeah. And I was always like, we can't we, we can't we can't just believe that because we believe it. Right. Right? Even if though even if we think spiritually it's hinted, like I need more concrete than yes. that. Well, right. Because, That's how I'm built. Well, I love that. No, but I love that because because I know we're being cryptic. We'll probably bring you up to speed well, in one second. Yeah. So what Nathan's talking about is really the gravity of well, you know what? Let's not go. Yeah, uh, we're not gonna. I'm we're, glad. We I was like, I was letting the Lord like. I'm glad we paused. can't go there now. We will get there. I promise. We're not gonna let this go. It is something me and Alex talk about a lot off camera. Uh, you know, I'm sure you talk about it with your friends and family to a degree as well. We're gonna get to it, but I think that there's other scriptures we definitely need to get to, and um, and this is. Uh, I am persuaded. <laughs> That when we get to this topic, there is a lot of fear and anxiety that many of us have that will be greatly diminished in a very good way. And that's why you're smiling like that. I think it's going to be greatly diminished. I'm saying this to give you hope. I'm saying this to that, you know, the Lord doesn't always allow us to see the good that's coming because we will often mess it up or we will break the process that he needs us to go through. All I'm saying is I believe that I believe that we're supposed to do EBRT in order as, as much as we can. I think the way everybody has cross-referenced things here, but I think that this particular topic and this particular revelation needs to happen at the appropriate time where it, the, the scripture really speaks to it. So, so you know, I know sometimes I get ahead of myself and you're like, well, how come Nathan's or, De, or De Alex or, it, you know, they'll read the scripture with somebody else that like, but why not this? And it's just that, like, I, I'm feeling in my spirit that it's a thing that needs to come, which totally matches with what I told you today. The uh -huh. knowledge is coming. Right. Yeah. So I had a vision in a dream. Maybe I'll make a video about it three and, nights and, ago. And, and, and the person in that dream. And was who? Exactly. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. Makes sense. It does make sense. And what was he doing? Sitting on with the thing and the code and the life, the new new body. Yeah. Which would make sense with also what I saw. Yeah. Yeah. I had a we vision three need, nights ago. They won't ago. need light anymore. They won't need candles. No. They because they will be coming. Oh, my Lord. Oh, my. Hold on. Oh, my. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Wow. So there's wow. another video coming. There's another video coming because uh, I'm just going to tell them that you had a dream. Wow. And there's another video coming. Oh, and my it's God. I have be... chills right now. Yeah. And it's going to be, and he just told me about this dream literally before we right. went Minutes, set up like for the video. A half an hour before this video. And uh, we're totally on the same page at who was in the dream wow. and what, you what know. was the message? And what, But we just didn't know the message. And it is fair to say wow. that at least. I think it just came through. Yeah. Okay. I'll let you th say that. So. Should I mention it in the EBRT? 
This um, is kind of insane. Tell me that's not, it's a little insane. Yeah, it's bing. It's on the nose. Okay, I'm gonna tell you guys. Do you guys want to know? One person saying I want to know. I I feel like I should just mention it here because it's in the video. Because what yeah. if somebody else doesn't find it? Let's do it. Okay, okay. Three nights ago, or three three th Sunday morning, I wake up from a dream that was not a dream. It was a very very like Nathan, pay attention. This is a this is like God speaking moment, and they don't happen often. Um, some of you may think they do, but they don't. So. Um, Nathan, pay attention. And I saw a man sitting on a, th like a, a throne, but there was no throne. And he was sitting just like this, very still, just looking straight. And he was sitting on the edge of a forest and it was a, a forest on earth. It wasn't like a heavenly forest. It wasn't a heavenly plane. And in fact, there were two guys in like jeans and t-shirts walking away from him at different paces. So each one had like a moment with him and this individual revealed something to each one of them that they needed to know. And my turn was coming up and I was walking to this guy on this throne and his eyes were complete light. Like there was no eye, you couldn't even see the eyebrow because there was just solid, crazy, bright white light coming, but the light stayed contained. Like it didn't make everything blind. So it's it's like a, like how you would imagine in a movie. I hate to say that, but it w it was like that. So the con it was contained like right here, like like sunglasses, like that. And he had this thing where there was his eyes, and then from his eyes were these lightning, like sh very straight yellow type of lightning color that came out from him. And then there was two balls of like lightning light. And then there was a, a lightning light above him and the line went down south and then curved and it was the it looked like you said the, the dna the dna, DNA helix. helix and and i knew it was in in the vision i knew that what i was seeing was the dna helix so i'm going to show everybody just real quick what it is if you guys don't know just type it in dna helix okay and then you put in uh or or, or dna what did i say it was and it's not helix DNA cross cross. Yeah. Do you guys know that cross? Oh man. Why am I not finding it now? DNA cross. Well, it, no, but it matters. It does. But what I mean to say is like you knew in the dream, I knew in the dream that that's what it was. And, and then and what it meant. And I knew, well, I knew what it meant was Christ is the new body. Yeah. Right. That we're that like, there's, we're like physically the body. Right? Yeah. Is that what you're talking about? Yeah, and you also knew, like, yeah. okay, because you saw that pattern on him, you knew, okay, this guy I can trust, I can talk to him. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. So, there was a little voice in my head, because I was very conscious. I was, like, awake. It wasn't, it was, like, I was sleeping. It was a dream. But I was very, like, aware in the dream. Like, I could, I knew I was dreaming. I don't know if you have that experience. So, anyways, um, I think to myself, is this a good guy? Should you walk towards him? And I, And then I looked, and I saw the the uh what is it called oh there it is the laminin l-a-m-i-n-i-n -I -I okay now i want to show you an actual just so you see what i saw i want to show you what i saw this is what i saw hopefully this works let's see let's go visit is it gonna allow me okay this is what i saw no it's not working okay man that's good enough. That's good enough. Let's see. Can you guys see that? So it's that version. It's like an actual, like, x-ray DNA photograph, right? So when you Google it, don't look at the drawing. That's not what I saw. I saw, like, the organic, real, like, how it's kind of squiggly. Here we go. This is what I saw. A. This is exactly what I saw. There's no way that... Here, I'm going to screen capture this. I'll post it next. That's exactly what I saw. Wow. Yeah. So, let's see if you can see it. That That's exactly what I saw, but it was like this. So, the guy's eyes were in the center of the cross. So, the cross literally met at his eyes, and then it, it did exactly that shape, just like that. And I, I, when I saw him, I was walking towards him, and I heard the the like a, a voice like in my head and it said uh house of david of the house of david and i'm like okay and then i was like well i know yeshua is that 
symbol to me, right? That that thing I know is Yeshua. So this guy's eyes were light. The helix thing was with the lightning and everything. And he was sitting on this invisible throne. You couldn't see it, but he was sitting down and he was super straight. And I knew that he was going to tell me something. And, be, and I knew I was about to wake up. And then somehow like a voice from him transferred into my brain. Like he didn't speak, just knowledge transferred into my brain. And I told Alex this and he said, what I'm going to tell you or what, 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 what you're going to learn from me is coming. It's, this isn't it. This, this dream, this vision, isn't it, but this is to tell you something's coming. Yeah. So now here we have this new body discussion, the, the, the lights, which is what happens to Yeshua's eyes, right? At, in revelation, it talks about how his eyes were just like burning fire. Yeah. And that's exactly like, well, this is just this bright white light. And then I'm like, this is a, this is um, I have a new perspective of the millennia. I have a, like, this is uh this is pretty crazy for me. I can't believe we have, I'm so glad I told you before we started this video because, um, that's awesome. It's a crazy, it was, and I knew that it was from the Lord and I knew it was a vision and I, it wasn't a dream. Like it was, there's so much, like there's more aspects to it. But like the thing I told Alex was like, it did the thing like in movies where it goes do, 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 do. and like you're far away and you see the whole picture. And then I zoomed in just on him and on his eyes. And it was like, this is a moment from God. You need to pay attention to this. This is going to matter. And so anyways, I normally don't make videos of this kind of stuff. This is like truth me free stuff. But since I can't leave it hanging and we got to put it in here because that's just really strange that that happened on Sunday. And now this is EBRT and we're having this discussion. So, yeah. Right. I, I, yeah, it fits. It fits like a it fits like a, you know, like, like it a, totally fits. It really fits. It's kind of. Um, crazy fit you 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 heard the uh him basically being announced to his house of david right and he so looked he, like david he looked he like he felt david. like david yeah he and he had the i i'm I, me and alex are persuaded that the vision i saw was a vision to make me understand that the person sitting on the throne was david now why that's important is me and alex talk a lot about that you know you guys have heard us talk about how there's Messiah, Messiah ben Yosef, which is like the spiritual side. That's the first coming of Yeshua. The nature, that's what it means. Not that there's two Messiahs, but the nature of, which is why the Jews didn't receive him. The second coming of Messiah is Messiah ben David. It's, a, it's the nature. He comes as a king who rules the earth for a thousand years. This is the prophecy that the Jews are waiting for their Messiah. So here I am in this vision I have three, three days ago well three yeah four four mornings ago whatever and it says house of david so yeshua is coming at in the messiah ben david energy i'm seeing this thing that con is the connector of our dna it's filled with the very light of god which is the same light that's coming out of yeshua at the second coming right and now we're talking about millennial and new bodies like come yeah. on does it did i tie this up well enough for you how crazy this is like and there's probably a lot more we, to come it's just very interesting come, that we are what, what, talking about this on ebrt this week yeah and and i think we definitely have said enough i'm worried to say anything else except i i think i just want oh, about to, the other part you well i just yeah. wanted to kind of encapsulate and say that the lord is i believe revealing a goodness a blessing and a hope exactly. in this video today that I didn't think was, I, I had no idea was coming. I had no idea was coming. You know what I mean? I didn't expect it today. I'll tell you that right yeah. now. So, 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 um, I, I, when Nathan says, when he looked at me just now, I think I know what you're thinking. He's basically saying, and, and there's great hope here. Hope is huge here. Um, that's, what... I haven't even fully received what you just said yeah. because I have always, I've always, you're going to poop a little bit after the video. Yeah, I think I'm going to lose it. You are. Because because the one thing that has always been just diff really difficult yeah. for me yeah. is... is <laughs> You're going to give it away. Go for it. Being scared that this hope that just came out isn't there. Yeah, yeah. That's and, well said. And knowing that, seeing that you are confirming that it means a lot to me and seeing that the dream you had is is sort of paving the way for this discussion today man you guys this has been a huge video i and you're right i think afterwards i'm gonna i'm gonna be losing my mind so what's also interesting is is that 
I am the type of person, if you know me, I'm actually, it's, it's really hard to convince me of anything. Oh, oh, uh, yeah. Like, Forget it's really hard. It. Uh, not, not that I'm trying to be an egghead. No. But it's just that I, I, I will have done so much research or study on a thing before yeah. I come. Like, today I said, I don't know. Right when we yeah. did the when we did a video about Mary being a virgin for the rest of her life, I said I don't know, and we looked it up. I don't have a problem saying I don't know, but if there's something that I'm confident on, it means like I really walked through it, I really drilled it, I hammered it, and yeah. usually I, I I I honestly I get like a confirmation in the spirit. This is so. Yeah. What's really interesting is I know we're gonna be vague. I think I'm gonna have to give you guys a tidbit here. What's really interesting is me and Alex have had a lot of conversations, and they've gotten a little bit intense between us because alex has this very strong hope about something that i myself was worried was not biblically true yes so now <laughs> now that i specifically i'm going to give credit to the fact that i had this very specific dream before this very specific revelation it's based on the two of them that makes me go alex your hope is confirmed right without without the dream i would just think this was an intellectual revelation and i would be like i don't know but because of the dream because of the nature of the vision and how how much it ties into this and how i don't think any of us thought that matthew 17 would lead to a millennial conversation no like this is too no. strange it's too yeah. it's too intense it's too strange yeah. and so i'm i still want to pray about it before i we I, you can but i'm not going to talk about it. like i i need to pray about it. i need to go to scripture further before i i really like do i think a video on it but um yeah like this must be a thing it, for me at least because of the nature in which this has un transpired and vicky is asking a question uh you guys had a spiritual experience before ebrt too right before last ebrt because we last ebrt we got on the camera or i got on the sh you know and we were just like buzzing about something which was uh things that you had just experienced uh the lady you just met oh that's yeah stuff. well that was yeah that was actually technically a a spiritual experience too that we can't really deny too much. Oh, your thing's dead. Oh, is um, it? no, let's go. Oh. Ogachuga says, "Is there more? There is more. There is more." But I'm, I'm gonna humbly, I'm gonna humbly. I don't mean to tease you, but I'm gonna, but I'm not gonna say anything right now because I need to pray about it and I need to just confirm before I. Because so, this is recorded and this is my ministry and yeah. I don't want to ever so say Melissa, anything. I'm going to, in, in respect to what the process that Nathan is right to embark upon from this moment on about the subjects we just talked about. When you ask me, what is my hope? I, I don't want to talk about it specifically uh, right now, but if you just review what we just talked about and the picture of the millennial we just drew as a result of these discussions and the understanding that uh, of, of, of sort of the dual occurrence of the day of the Lord experience kind of thing, if you if and, and and what we just said we reading joel what, what we just said about the people that joel was prophesying to and then the different roles that people will play in the millennial all of that stuff has to do with this hope that i have and mm -hmm. and so that's all i want to leave it at because i don't want to make a definitive statement right now because i'm i'm like nathan here i'm i'm scared to be wrong yeah and I am. Um, I'm not saying yeah to him. Well, I'm, saying I'm scared to be wrong because this is this is huge. And if people don't understand this one or misunderstand this one, oh, it's going to be hell for it's us. It's bad. It's really bad for us, and it's bad for them. Yeah. And so I feel that we've been given a glimpse of something because we've made it this far. Yeah. And because we've gone on the journey, and we hoped for the hope, and yet we were willing to say, Lord, Your will is true. Your will is right. Whatever it is, it is, and it is right regardless of what my hopes might be this i think uh, for me to clearly state i feel like i need to state this just why you're saying these things for everybody who's wondering like what in the heck are these two dudes talking about the thing that was just revealed to both me and alex to me and then alex is hearing me confirm that i got the confirmation with this dream and everything it's a fundamental game changer to faith to the faith fundamental game changer that is not something that anybody is easy to receive or to believe. But the funny thing is, is like this is such 
if, if it is what it is, and again, I'm going to pray, and I'm like going to really seek the Lord on it. If it is what we think it is, because I think you're picking it up as well, obviously, it's a, it's a fundam it's a change to the understanding of the fundamentals of faith. So it's that big of a deal. Like I've, yeah, it's 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 if we can confirm this through scripture and and so forth, it's an absolute fundamental game changer. So I'm I'm literally like twitching in my brain, <laughs> like I'm having a meltdown, dude. And and How? so and and so Nathan's confirmation of um having a dream, very specific, God's to talking to you, dream, uh, preparing him for this discussion today yeah i just want to testify and confirm that dreams throughout the ebrt i have had dreams mm -hmm. that are so incredibly totally 100 percent telling me explaining to me uh, uh something that i'm struggling to understand in the scripture or in general about yeah. how god feels about a certain thing what well and they're specific and they also have to do with my life and mm -hmm. and i haven't revealed these dreams because they're a little personal and there's mm -hmm. personal stuff in them but um i'm telling you right now i have had the experience through this ebrt through this process of trying to understand the lord where he reveals things in dreams so clearly that there's no doubt left yeah and and so that's why i'm extra excited about well, and we also had the because, moses experience yeah because if if nathan had not had this dream then i could just be sitting here going well you know hey i went after my favorite hope here or something you know i, I i'm interpreting things the way i want to interpret exactly them, that's what i think that i would be perceiving yes too. and and we would probably not i was surprised that we had i i as i was talking about this what i think this meant or what I was receiving. Forget what I think, because Alex doesn't think well. But whatever was happening in this, and no, not really. Whatever was happening in this moment, as I kept talking, I was actually a little scared because I'm like, uh oh, I feel like we're encroaching upon some area. But it wasn't that I wanted to encroach upon it. And you picked up on that. You're like, I can feel that he doesn't want to keep going. Because we I knew what you were talking about. Because we know where this is heading. And he knows where this is heading. Yeah. And he doesn't want to go there. Because you also know how I felt about yeah, it. Yeah. And like, but. Or maybe you just had fear of the Lord. Well, I just, thing. I just He's probably like Nate's gonna. Mm. Well, both, <laughs> both, because not, not. I just, I don't know. I was compelled to continue talking, and and when 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 something clicked for you. Anyway, we're 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 in real time reviewing what you just saw happen. So forgive me. Yeah, this is a weird video. I get it. But, Super weird. But uh, I do believe that. Yeah, I. I am. I am authentically, folks, having a full mental breakdown. Like, <laughs> like legitimately, my brain is like, this is insane good news. Like, in saying, like, I am two inches away from bawling my eyes out. I'm sure you're the same. So, I'm pumped. I hope this is not the weirdest. Like, I hope this is not too weird. Like, this is such, I'm like realizing we're making a video series. I'm so glad it's not about production <laughs> because no, I really am. Like, I'm so grateful that this is like somehow actually maintained its authenticity about fellowship. We're just using a camera to reach each other. Yeah. Right. Because if this was a production, this last 30 minutes <laughs> is the worst video <laughs> series chunk ever because we're like being cryptic we're not like telling what it is where we got i mean we we went from matthew 17 the vision of elijah and moses to like millennial discussions to like full-on fundamental conceptual breakage like this is huge it, guys. along with the vision and dream this is insane so i'm telling you what i'm gonna i'm going to actually call this a video I know we still have more 17 to go, but the reason is, is I feel that there might be more here in 17 and I feel like I need to pray about this for at least the next week. <laughs> and then let's come back to this. And then, because who knows, maybe, maybe I'll get confirmation. It's supposed to be shared. And that way it all ties into this moment, which is where it was revealed. Um, yeah. So I, I hope you guys <laughs> just, I just hope that this is a blessing for you. I'm looking at the comments. They're saying it's not weird. It's not strange. Yeah. It's EBRT. EBRT is the thing is 
is EBRT is so anointed. We land on holidays, on the scripture that talks about the holidays. We had the Moses thing. Like, I know for you guys, maybe that wasn't so weird, but some of you even said like, well, after the Moses thing, like after that video, I never even wanted to come back. And some of you said that, well, the Lord told you, go back, watch the next video. And what do we open up with? A repentance. You know, like we are two dudes, no different than you. And we, I hope we don't come off as trying to be any different than you. Um, and yeah, I just, you know, it's not very often. I think the last vision vision I had like this was when the Lord told me about do be the light to this, to this caliber, to this wow. degree. But this revelation is even way bigger than what well, crazy enough. It matches be the light. Yeah, exactly. That's what's crazy. Exactly. Yeah. And you tied that even yes. in. Yeah. It, so there's a thing here, guys. There's a real thing here. We're going to get back to you. I love you a lot. Thank you so much for tuning in. Thank you so much for your con comments. Be blessed. Be the blessing. God bless you. Pray, guys. pray for us on this. Pray for me. Pray for you. Pray for the Lord to give you revelation too. I would love to hear what happens over the next week. I'll talk to you guys soon. Hallelujah. We'll talk to you soon. Yeah. Nate's having a mental breakdown. <laughs>